how do you paint white buildings in watercolour? The challenge in watercolour is that we don't use white paint or certainly use it over large areas. So how do you create the appearance of a large white building such as we've got in this picture here? Hello, my name is Tim Wilmot and I create full length watercolour tutorial videos to help you improve your watercolour technique. Uh, particularly suitable if you're a beginner. I do cover different watercolour techniques that you need to be familiar with, such as laying down a wash, wet in wet, and so on. So in this video, I'm going to be painting this scene in Albufeira. That's the name of the place in southern Portugal. Bright sunny day. And look at this large white building. How do we approach that? Well, first of all, I, when I look at a scene, I think of values. How dark is an area? How light is an area? And I think in this scene, quite simply, we've got about four main values. So starting from the lightest, of course, we've got the white building, the blinds and so forth. Um, next darkest would be the street, the uh, square here. Um, just a little bit darker than the white buildings, particularly light over in the left-hand corner. The sun is coming from the left, so it's lighter there, a little bit darker over to the right. Next third level of darkness is the sky and also the shadows on the buildings. If you were to think of this as a black and white photograph, the level of greyness um, the, the sky would be very similar to the, the actual greyness, the darkness of the shadows on that building. So that's level three. And then lastly, the darkest area is the building here. Um, and coming over to the shadows, the, the side of the building here, very dark um, at the base of the building, street level, and then um, going out um, into the shadow going across the street and the shadow does get a little bit lighter towards the the far right hand edge here so in planning a scene i first of all take a bit of time a few minutes maybe in just appraising the situation and thinking about those values and thinking about composition uh, I've decided that this, this would be a, a suitable scene for watercolour, first of all. Then I have to think about how I'm going to approach this in stages. Um, normally there's four stages to my paintings, starting with the outline drawing, then laying down the main wash covering most of the paper. Uh, third stage is going in with the darks and shadows. And then fourth, uh, last stage is just some fine, finer detail work to finish the painting off. So I'm also thinking about composition and this scene obviously includes people. We have to include people in the scene. It provides an extra level of interest. Um, it's going to help with composition, help uh, give us an understanding of the, the scale and, and size of different objects. So we'll be including some people as well in the scene. Okay, so let's see how we get on. If I could just uh, initially describe the paper I'm using, it's Saunders Waterford cold press paper. Uh, this, so this is the medium texture, not too rough, not too smooth, sort of in the middle. And it's 15 inches by 11 inches in size. I'm going to be using a 3B pencil, so quite soft, um, quite dark to really allow me to see the main shapes, the main objects in the picture. Um, and some of these lines will, will show in the, in the end, um, in the end painting, but I don't mind that too much. It sort of adds to uh, the loose, the loose feeling of the watercolor. 
So I've got my reference photograph in the top right corner there, which I will remove when I start painting because it does hide some of the, the palette. Most difficult thing is really knowing when, where to start making that first mark on the paper because from then on in that kind of guides where most other things will appear in the picture. So I'm just getting in, as I say, the main outlines started with the top, uh, the, the left hand building, the top of the, uh, the roof, almost a 45 degree angle, and then going across the top of the white building, and getting in the perspective of the balconies. So now the street level, it goes down a little bit. It's not completely horizontal. Left hand building and the street level. Now there's a lot going on there down at the street level. There's a sort of, I think there's a cafe, um, at the far at the far side. So I'm just giving um, a little impression, a little indication of some of the shapes of tables, people um, down there on the down on the far side. Now there's a, a an A board sign outside this. I put there's probably a restaurant at this end of the uh, building as well. So get that in. I think it balances out the composition quite well to have that um, in there on, on the left hand side. And then those shadows going across the street, across this square. And I'm going to have a foreground shadow, uh, which I like putting in just to give another, just a, a bit of foreground interest, not too much. It's going to be done very, very simply and a figure emerging out of the, um, a, a figure emerging out of this foreground shadow. So I'll have them with a pair of shorts. I'm just sort of making this up really. And this figure will be partly in the shade, but just need something on that just need something on that right hand side to balance up the uh, the sign and um, all the people on the on the left hand side and then the, the figure will be connected to that foreground shadow maybe get in another figure over towards the right hand side anyway so some distant figures in the cafe some standing, some sitting, of course. Again, I'm sort of making this up. They'll almost be silhouetted dark figures against the white building. And then over to the right hand side and the down to that street level. A few details now for the building. Just getting in the main lines, horizontals, verticals, balconies, little indication of where some of the windows will be. There's four very nice blinds over the first floor windows. I think they, they look, um, they're quite nice with the um, diagonal shadows coming down almost like a 45 degree angle. So I'll get those in. So that's the, 
the top of the uh, ground level and the sort of balcony on that left hand building just a few now, the, there's a lot of detail in that building on the left hand side but i'm going to render it very simply and uh so i've just drawn in where the where the main balcony is going to be and some verticals here just to help me uh place some some of those uh strong strong uh, vertical lines and windows now going back to the white building there's some blinds over the street there's a sort of short one on the left hand side and there's a longer one directly in front of us just make just adding a bit more detail to this foreground figure and get in another figure maybe walking from right to left so starting with the head then the uh the body and then the uh legs shadow So that bigger blind that's uh, directly opposite us, that's that. And that really is the uh, initial drawing done. As I say, just getting in the main shapes, the outline of the buildings, the uh, maybe just some indication of where the, the shadows will be. Um, not too many. I'll be doing those uh, freehand with the brush, getting in the figures. I'm trying to think about the composition, I think it, it's sort of all right with those distant figures um, just left of center, then two figures on the right, the big, the, the A board um, on the left hand side, balancing that out. I think it's going to work all right. So white buildings, how do we paint white buildings? Well, first of all, they're not going to be completely white. If you look closely at this um, building, because it's so bright, it's sort of being contaminated, taking on the colors of objects around it. Uh, um, it won't be, you know, perfectly white. Uh, white buildings do deteriorate over time. Um, so I am sort of dirtying it up a little bit with some uh, blues and yellows just to uh, make it a little bit more um, weathered if you like and less white so that's the f that, that's a key thing to um, say about the building of the, the painting of these white buildings is to and I, I do this the same with um, pedestrian crossings uh, the white stripes on a pedestrian crossing, I'll very often paint that first in the painting, um, just taking off anything, almost just taking any paint off the palette, uh, slap it on, and uh, it will dry lighter. Uh, but then adding in the darker colors around that white, like this blue of the sky, that's instantly making that building a little bit whiter. Now, so I, so I painted the white building, but I've immediately gone in with the sky. This will dry lighter, as I say, and I've got a bit of a soft edge going here. So I've come down into the, uh, the tops of the building, and then with a damp brush, I'm now lifting off, going around the edges, just to give me that soft edge more of appearance of uh, hazy, strong sunshine. Watercolors are all about edges. Di different edges in a watercolor uh, can be quite nice to achieve. A combination of soft edges and hard edges. So these are going to be some soft edges. I'll have 
hard edges for the shadows and the the uh, building on the left hand side as it comes across the the white building that will be a hard edge so lifting off another watercolor technique often while the paint is the surface is damp or moist then with a a damp brush or it could be a bit of tissue or a paper towel we just lift off we touch the surface and we just it just soaks up the uh, the pigment on the paper to give you those lighter areas now with this wash i'm with this first wash i'm trying to cover most of the rest of the paper except for those areas that will be deliberately white for example the a board sign in the bottom left corner and the two figures so i'm just really laying down a, a base color here this this will be gone over again but just um as i say cover up almost everything except for those deliberately bright areas try and carefully paint around the figure don't need to be too those two figures don't, I don't need to be too precise now when I come down to the street level this will be I'm not going to be painting over this again apart from shadows and maybe a a few lines just to help with the uh, perspective and uh, leading the eye into the scene but basically with this uh, more of a warm color now a light warm color as i said at the beginning this is probably the second darkest area or sorry the uh after the white building it's the next darkest area in the painting and notice these brush strokes pretty random you could you could laying down a wash with the paper on a slight slope you can um, paint in a number of horizontal lines and gradually come down the uh, the paper um, I prefer to I don't want the I don't want the, the the street level to be completely monotone I want there to be some subtle uh, differences in in colors and, and values so I've gone with that sort of or this sort of crisscross random technique and then mop up a little bit of the bottom the board is on a slight slope now i've speeded up the video because i need to let that wash dry completely so i uh, have fast forwarded the video for you so we can jump to the third stage in the painting which is laying down the dark shadows now i'm using a slightly smaller mop brush here than i did with the initial wash the, the initial wash was done with a with as large a mop brush as i can get away with i want to work quickly i want uh, the brush to hold a lot of paint so as large a brush as I can now a slightly smaller brush with a good edge and a good point getting in the shadows on this white building and this again will make it appear whiter and you can see how that the initial wash I put down all those different yellows and blues it's gone a lot lighter and it will appear as a white building in the end so holding the brush almost like a pen I'm trying to be a little bit more careful now with some of these shadows a lot of them will be uh, a 45 degree angle and that's quite a, a pleasing um, effect to have in watercolor these diagonal shadows going across the building um, it's quite a, a, a popular thing to do and um, 
just gives you a little bit more, creates a bit more form to the building as well. For example, at the top here, um, these shadows just uh, towards the top, it just uh, gives the impression of different um, levels of the building, a sort of step or a, um, uh, a little bit of an extension beyond um, the initial, uh, the front of the building. So these shadows are mainly, the, the, the color I'm using is ultramarine blue, a burnt sienna, and a little bit of alizarin crimson. If I want to add in a little bit of a yellow, I might choose a yellow ochre. So the brush is not too not too wet. I'm often asked, um, can you say something about the amount of water to paint? Well, that's sometimes quite difficult to say exactly what that be, what that would be. It comes with experience, but here I don't want the brush to be too wet or too dry. It's sort of in the middle here. And I very often, I'm looking at the brush I'm seeing, I'm checking that I've got a good edge. I need a good edge for particularly this part here, doing the, um, the shadow underneath the, um, a little sort of overhanging roof, uh, above a, above a, uh, a terrace or a balcony. So I need to be quite precise with that, but I'm constantly looking at the brush and uh, checking that I've got just got the right um, amount of moisture there. Just a little bit of extra details as I go over the building and a first window. Now the thing with these white buildings is I don't want to add too much detail into them. I want to try and maintain um, the whiteness. Don't want to add too much details to them. But down on the street level, I do need to put in some dark shadows underneath the two uh, shop lines. So quite dark um, immediately be below the line, but then come a little bit. So I've added a bit of water here just to come a little bit weaker down towards the outside of that shadow and have that diagonal sort of 45 degree, trying to make it parallel to the other uh, shadows that I've made. And where there's little bits of white that I've left on the building, I can make uh, a little bit of a shadow that could be some sort of architectural um, element just protruding and just creates a little shadow. So you can see that I'm just looking at the edge of the brush, making sure I've got a good edge, making sure there's not too much water on the brush. Now these four lines that are coming out. I need to be quite careful with these to make, it's like a repeating pattern across the, across this white building. So I need to make them fairly similar. <clears throat> So again, the, cl the classic sort of mix of ultramarine blue, a little bit of alizarin crimson and burnt sienna. And the last one. Oh, 
maybe just a few odd details here and there. Now there is a balcony um, extension that's creating another shadow. So I'll just uh, put that in again, the, the uh, that angle parallel to the other angles. So this main, this main blind that's uh, facing us. Quite dark, quite dark underneath again. It's a little bit more red in this uh, initial shadow, add a bit more blue into this one. Now I've reached this figure, so I'll just paint around the head. I've got a horizontal white line coming across, could be a tabletop or something, and then um, meeting this uh, foreground figure. Paint around the head. So there's quite a few tables and chairs under the, underneath that blind. So I'm not going to paint in individual tables and chairs, but just sort of try and give the impression of something going on there. If no, I added a, added in a couple of dark marks. So if I don't like them, just quickly lift them off with the fingertip just so that uh, what well, timing is important there just to to lift it up quickly before it has a chance to to sort of embed itself so now I need to Start on the left hand side and the top of the building. I'm going to start fairly dark and then come a little bit lighter in the middle of this building on the left and then go darker towards the base, then, then drag the uh, shadows out to the right. That's the plan. So nice and dark to start with. And I started using uh, a very strong mixture of neutral tint, then a little bit of yellow ochre. Now I've got a bit more water on this brush compared to the shadows I was painting earlier. Because I've got a larger area to, to cover, I can... I can be um, not too, not so precise with the, with the brush marks. I've got a large area to cover, so I'm quickly going over this. And a cooler blue over to the very left hand side, ultramarine blue. mainly and just gradually continue down to the bottom on the right hand side I'm going uh, darker again
Now there's a blind coming out just above the street, so I'm just sort of leaving a little line there unpainted just to give the impression of some kind of extension coming out coming out from the wall a uh, shop blind or something. All done fairly quick this side. And go a little bit darker and thicker towards the base. A few dry brush strokes towards the very left hand side, just where maybe the light is creeping around the corner of this building. That's where the light is coming from. So a little bit lighter on the left, darker on the right. down to the A board sign and paint around that. I'm using quite a fair bit of neutral tint now to keep it dark. We're at street level and just while the paint is still moist, I'm going in quite dark. This will dry a little bit lighter. Probably need to add a bit more in there. I'm beginning now to come out into the shadow going across the street. Now that needs to be a little bit bluer. I think the shadow is quite cool coming out, so I need to veer away from that that dark neutral tint and make it a good bit bluer. There are just a few little lines coming out across the street. Maybe there's a an aerial or a mast on that um, on that building. Now a little bit of detail for the figures. So some seated, some or one or two standing up. I'm sort of following those pencil lines I did did earlier. Maybe a just a few horizontal lines just to create the effect of a table or two, then 
this guy standing up. Maybe it's a waiter or something. A few table legs. And then a, a figure sat down on this end table. Not go out any further than that. I think that's that's about right. Try and make all the tables about the same height. Now I've used a fingertip there just to lift off a little bit of the paint because this bright white building is creating a, a lot of there's a lot of light being thrown off that back onto that uh, shaded area so um, yeah I'm going to have to use here a a, a, um, a a moist brush just to try and lift out some of this paint and just a line there going up to the back just lift that off a little bit as well so I've, I've basically dipped the brush into some clear water then squeezed out the brush with um, just pinching my fingers um, pinching the brush squeeze out the moisture so the brush is quite dry it's going to it's going to suck up the uh the um the paint that's on the uh the paper just to allow me to lift off and create those lighter areas again sort of trying trying to enhance the that light that's coming into going against that that white building bouncing into the shadows. So figures on the right hand side. Now I don't want to make these too detailed that leg needs to be that leading leg needs to be a little bit thicker than that bit of a bit of a shadow on the right hand side because the the sun's coming from the left shadow across the street Now, before I do the figure, the foreground figure, I'm going to paint the foreground shadows first. Quite cool. Fair bit of blue in this. And then I will paint in the figure and drop the legs into the wet shadows so they they sort of blend a little bit they sort of bleed into each other like the other figure bit of a shadow on the right hand side in the shorts couple of legs but 
I thought the head was just a little bit too dark, so I've lifted it out with my finger tips. Perhaps this one I'm going to have a this figure's going to have a striped top, so a few um, a few bands just to sort of give the impression of a, a striped vest or something. And there we are. Uh, back to that waiter that needs to be filled in that um, just below that, just below that waiter's uh, head. Now, smaller brush. So this is a synthetic round brush a lot a lot smaller than the mop brush but it allows me to do some more detail work um, a little bit more precise I, I know the mop brush i know the mop brush i've got it's got a good edge got a good point but it sort of lacks that sort of springiness that you've got with a synthetic brush and it's great for now doing this little this little bit of work with um with some of the architectural details uh the brush um it's not too wet here fairly dry so um not too much water on the brush compared to the uh pigment and fairly dark as well so i'm just really picking up a bit of neutral tint ultramarine blue to create the the details now of the white building and I don't want to put too much detail into this white building. I want to try and maintain that whiteness of the building. Um, so we, we initially, I, I, of course, I, I laid down that initial wash of some yellows and some blues and, uh, went in to, 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 to lose the, the whiteness of the paper and then went in with those darker colors of the sky and, uh, uh, slightly darker with the street level um, but then with the the, the shadows and, and windows not too much because I want to try and still create the impression of a quite a bright building so I won't paint every single window and every single window won't be completely painted in I'm just sort of um, just creating a few brush marks giving the just general indication of where the window is um, which I think works rather than being too precise being too too uh, tight by painting in every window pane um, I'll probably use a little bit of white paint um, for some of these windows because uh, some of them are um, the, the window frames are white and they're, um, they're, they're hitting the, the, the sun. So, uh, when this darker paint is dry, I'll probably go over with a tiny bit of white paint just in a few places to, uh, give that impression of that, those white window frames. So all the windows are a little bit different, not too uniform. That's uh, just below the neutral tint. That was a burnt umber, which I don't often use actually, um, but just I just sort of picked it up just to add in something different and take a little bit of moisture off the the brush as well, just keeping it uh, the right kind of consistency.
all the way over. Add in a darker head for this figure. and some shop details, some windows or doorways for the ground level on that left hand side. I can't go too dark over there because I've got those dark figures and if I if I went too dark around those uh, figures in the cafe I'd lose the sort of impact of them. Now I've lifted off a bit of the color on the left hand shorts just to make them a little bit lighter because that's the the direction of the of the sun now we're going into some of the details of the building on the left hand side, the uh, uh, balcony and um, just some horizontals and verticals, not too many. That uh, left hand side is still quite damp actually it, uh, um, so I'm getting I'm getting some nice effects of hard and soft edges, perhaps a bit of writing on this a board. Windows, just a few. Maybe a few railings on the on the balcony. I forgot to add in a couple of windows on the white building. A lot of these windows are just really too dark, um, dark, too dark brush marks, and that that gives the impression of the window. Now a bit of cerulean blue um, to there's some nice um, sort of mouldings and details around the facade of this building. So I'm using um, dry, a dry brush stroke with cerulean blue to paint in some of these details.
be a bit careful on the the details of that white bill. I don't add in too much now, so I'm conscious of knowing or trying to know when to stop. I've got a very dry brush now uh, to add in a few lines here, which I, I think it, it does help that they're, they're not there in the, they're not really there in the, the actual photograph, but just to um, some imaginary lines, uh, the, 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 the slabs of the, uh, the, the square there and the, these lines just sort of guiding your eye, uh, into those figures, uh, at, at the back there. The last step, I'm, I'm near the end of the painting now. The last step is really, uh, for me, sometimes adding in a little bit of highlighting with some white paint in moderation, not too much. Fairly thick white paint, almost straight out of the tube with the smallest brush or a very small brush. Well, I'm just using the same round brush that I used, used earlier. Just the hint of a little bit of light on the foreground figure there. Um, and I'll go up to the top of the white building. As well. To add in a few little highlights on some aerials or something like that. Here's those white frames on some of the windows, not uh, not too many. So dark, dark uh, line there, just add a, a white line to the left of it. And that's about it. I think we're done. So here's the finished painting. How to paint white, uh, white buildings with watercolour. Uh, painting in a fairly loose style. So my tips are white buildings aren't really white try and observe those buildings before and just pick up any little extra colorings that are in there any any faint uh, um, little colorings of some some warms or some cools and that's the first thing after drawing the the white building that's the first thing that you you put down is just that very loose covering of those very faint colors and let that um, let that be surrounded by darker darker values like in my example uh the the blue sky so nice blue sky making the white building appear brighter that that those darks around it make that the lights appear a good bit lighter a good bit brighter and then the shadows as well again it's just going to help pop that building out just a few little details of shadows and uh, windows. So there you are. I hope you liked it. Um, if you want to have a go at painting some of these videos uh, yourself, I do have a scheme up on my, my Patreon site, www.patreon.com slash Tim Wilmot, T-I-M-W-I-L-M-O-T. Uh, every month I do set some painting or a painting project and for a small pledge, basically the cost of a cup of coffee, you can have a go yourself and in return you get a video critique sent back to you. So for more details on the painting projects, if you want to try and improve your, your painting skills, you want to share your work with other watercolorists from all over the world, have a, have a look up to patreon.com slash Tim Wilmot. Take a look at um, the different uh, 
offerings I've got up there, different uh, levels of assistance and hope to hope to have you on board. And if you want to see any more um, of my paintings and get more information on workshops, online demos, I have got a um, another online workshop starting or scheduled for the December the 15th. Uh, I'll be announcing more information on my website www.timwilmot.com but that's where a lot of artists gather together online and we all paint a particular subject that I, I set um, over two hours and uh, I just go through the whole process from start to finish and just trying to give as much commentary as I can. So go up there on, onto my website for more information on uh, events coming up and check out Patreon. So thanks very much for watching this. Catch up with you next time.